Welcome to part three of the basic browser video series. In part one of the series, we focused on the use of accession names. The many ways that identifiers of various kinds can be used to locate genomic locations and annotations. We also saw a few configuration options for setting up the browser. In part two, we featured more ways to set up the browser to your liking, as well as several options for exporting images to use in posters, papers, and presentations. In this installment, we will continue the conversation about configuring the browser and show how to use DNA sequence as a device for finding a location. At the end of part one, we found ourselves on chromosome 11 with several data sets turned on. That's a convenient location to begin this installment as well. To make it easy to find that location again, we saved the configuration for easy access. The saved session feature is the subject of a separate tutorial in the UCSC browser video collection, so it will not be presented here. The session was saved under the username video demo one and the session name hg19 underscore nav one. The session can be accessed directly in any browser using this URL genome.ucsc.edu slash s slash video demo one with a capital D slash hg19 underscore nav1. This returns us to the same location with all the configuration options intact. Note that the following tracks are turned on. Alternate haplotypes, but there are no data for this track at this location in the browser. Chromosome bands, UCSC genes, and OMIM genes. And we are at a 5.5 megabase region of chromosome 11. A good way to get around in the browser is to use DNA sequences. So let's get some DNA from a gene to use as starting material. Let's click into the details page of SLC6A5 and find out what it is. Turns out it's Homo sapiens solute carrier family 6 neurotransmitter transporter glycine. A lot of other details are provided here as well, but for the moment let's just get some DNA sequence. We'll scroll down the page just a little bit and we'll get the mRNA sequence and then grab a chunk of mRNA right out of the middle of it. I will copy that. Then we'll go back to the browser and just paste the DNA into the position box. If that DNA is unique or not, Blatt will show us a page of matches where we can go to that location on the browser. So here we are on a page with a single match. And if we hit the browser link, then we'll go to a 52 nucleotide location. Blatt is tolerant of some mismatches. So if I paste this 52 nucleotides back in and just remove a couple of G's here and maybe insert a couple of C's right here and then hit go, Blatt will still find it, but now it finds several smaller hits for the segments that are uninterrupted on other chromosomes as well. But the biggest hit, the one with the highest score that spans the full 52, is still on chromosome 11. And if I go to the browser using that link, here's our two base deletion, and here's our insertion over here where I added a couple of bases, shown as a little tick mark between the bases where it was inserted. Blatt will work well when you have nucleotide probe to put in the box of 22 bases or more. And it works a little bit as you get smaller, down to around 16, but below that, it doesn't work at all. In that case, there's a feature of the browser will let you find strings of nucleotides in the current browser window. It won't find them all over the genome, but if you go into the mapping and sequencing blue bar group below the browser graphic, there is a track called Short Match. If you click into short match, it tells you that you can use anything between 2 and 30 nucleotides. And let's just put in GCG. You'll see also that the IUPAC ambiguity codes are supported. So R is for purine, G or A, Y is pyrimidine, C or T, and so forth. So if we just hit submit, and we'll find any occurrences of GCG, and it'll also find such occurrences on the opposite strand. So a CGC here on the minus strand is also a match. 
it'll find all stretches of that particular nucleotide string in the current browser window. It is not possible, however, to export a list of all of the occurrences of this string via the table browser as it is for other tracks. Another useful feature of the browser is drag and zoom, or drag and highlight, depending on which choice you make in the menu that appears. If you put your mouse up in the scale bar near the top of the browser graphic and drag it to the right or left, it will highlight a region. Let's highlight the region around this two-base deletion in the blat track that we made. and put a single highlight here. And let's zoom out by a factor of three. And let's select a region next to it to highlight and change the color. Let's make the color much darker and add a second highlight. So you have two highlights side by side, and you can see how the colors stand up when you zoom out. If you zoom out by a factor of 10 or more, the lighter color starts to get more difficult to see as you get farther and farther out. So it's a good idea to use a darker color if you're going to zoom out. You can put your right mouse button over the highlight and you have the option to remove a particular highlight by using the option in that pop-up. Another feature of the browser that can help when you're configuring it to your liking is your ability to drag tracks up and down and rearrange them on the screen. Ordinarily, the tracks appear in the same order that the options appear among the pull-down menus below the browser graphic, but you're not constrained to using that ordering on the screen. If you put your mouse over the text space on the left side of the browser graphic for any track, you can drag tracks up and down and put them in any order that you choose. Another option that you get when you put your mouse over the region in the scale bar near the top of the screen is to zoom in you can zoom into any specific region that you select. On any spot of the browser, there is a context-sensitive right-click menu. If you put your mouse over a specific item in the browser graphic and use the right mouse button, you get a menu that lets you zoom to the full length of the item. In this case, we selected a gene. You can highlight the entire gene. You can get the DNA. You can click into the details page that we've been to before where it shows you all of the information about the gene itself. And you can go to the configuration page where you can turn off the splice variants. This has the same effect as using the small button on the left side of the track in the image. So let's just zoom to the gene and observe the full-sized gene filling the entire window. Let's turn off some of the data tracks and leave just the gene set on. So we'll turn off the alt haplotypes track, the cytoban track, the omim track, and the short match track. We'll also turn off the blat track. That leaves us with just our gene in the window. Let's zoom into the exon right here in the middle of the screen by selecting it from the top of the window, and we'll zoom in even a little further down to get to the amino acid level. And let's look at configuring the scale bar at the top of the page. You can see that we have this scale bar in roughly the middle third of the page, and the genome assembly is listed next to it in the browser graphic, although it can be removed using the configuration button that we visited in part two of this Browser Basics series. Let's click into the scale bar configuration button on the left side and you can decorate the graphic just a little bit by putting in a title such as, this is my title. And then you can add an assembly and a position to the browser graphic and submit that. So now you have a new row at the top where it says, this is my title, and the assembly and the position are listed here in another row of text. Let's go back to the configuration window and we'll turn off the title, assembly, and position and switch the display mode from dense to full. You can see now that we have the amino acids of all three reading frames showing in the browser below the DNA sequence.
And so you can see that one of the three reading frames is going to match the amino acid sequence of the exon that we have in the window, YVVLV and YVVLV. If your gene was being transcribed on the opposite strand, you can reverse the orientation by clicking on the little arrow on the left. Of course, in this orientation, the translation does not match the reading frame of the gene we have in the window currently. Let's turn the DNA base sequence back to the plus strand, and we'll go back into the position bar configuration and turn it from full back to dense and submit that. And we'll look at another way to navigate in the genome browser. You see here we're at a 48 base window in the SLC6A5 gene. And one option is to use DNA sequence homology to jump to the same location in other genomes. So if you go to View in Other Genomes Convert in the top blue bar menu, you see that the default is to go to another human genome. You can go to the HG38 assembly or back to HG18, or you can go to other animals. Human and mouse are the most widely used on the browser, so they come up at the top. Let's just accept the default and go to the HG38 Genome Assembly and hit Submit. For a small region, especially an exon, this is likely to be a really good single hit. If you're zoomed out and have a much larger region, or if you're going to an animal that's more distantly related than one human genome assembly to another, you're likely to have multiple hits on this window here because of rearrangements in one lineage or the other since the last common ancestor. So let's just click into this link and you'll see that here we are in the same region of SLC6A5, amino acid YVVLV is still in the window. It's possible then to get back to HG19 two different ways. You can use the view in other genomes convert using homology again, or if you have navigated to a different location, you have another option. Let's go to a different location by dragging the window off to the left. For the last two human and the last two mouse genomes, you have the option to return to your previous location on the other assembly. Go over here to Genomes and choose the HG19 assembly. In this case, the browser just remembers your last location. So it's not using homology, it's using memory, and it's essentially setting up the browser just the way it was the last time you were on that genome. So if I click on HG19, you see that we're back at the 48 base pair window at the same region of SLC6A5 we were at before. So that concludes our conversation about how to get around in the browser and how to configure the browser to display the image the way you like it. Stay tuned to the video channel or subscribe to the channel for future tutorials on the UCSC Genome Browser. Please note that we conduct full-day and two-day on-site trainings at your institutions. Prices are reasonable. Go to genome.ucsc.edu slash training slash. Thanks for watching and thanks for using the UCSC Genome Browser.